Hi there. Uh, the Norwegian army sent out a very interesting uh, letter the other day to uh, 4,000 car owners here in, uh, in Norway. And in that letter it uh, basically said that if we need to, we will come and take your car. Um, I have a few things to say about that. <clears throat> First of all, it was put, portrayed or presented in the news as this wonderful thing. Because, you know, uh, there was an interview with, with one of the people who had gotten this letter. I have not gotten that letter myself, uh, but he uh, he was quoted as you know, being very positive and, and this is uh, how we can contribute to the def defense of, of Norway if Norway, uh, if we, we end up in a, you know, a war situation or a crisis like that. Um, and this must be seen in connection with what Russia is doing at the moment. Um, and, or it's being used, Russia's activity is being used as an excuse to activate this old, and uh, I believe uh, it was a dormant law. It, it's, it, it actually says in the Norwegian law that the army or the state can take your car and your house in a... a, a um, in a war situation or something like that. I didn't know about that law and apparently it was one of those many laws or many paragraphs in the Norwegian law that is not utilized anymore. And there are actually a lot of these very old laws that paragraphs in the laws uh, that that makes no sense anymore and, and but they're still in 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 the law but uh, but anyway the the problem here is of course that <laughs> if a situation you know if we get into a proper shtf situation you really need your car maybe you will have to get away maybe you will have to flee from some kind of threat being, uh, I don't know, nuclear threat, invasion, whatever. So, from a prepper's uh, standpoint or, or, or view, it's, it's catastrophic to lose your car, to lose your vehicle in a situation like that. Now, <clears throat> let's uh, get the kettle on here. <clears throat> I believe that there are similar paragraphs in the law in many countries and I believe that we are now touching upon what I've talked about before um, about being mobile as a prepper. Uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket as they say. Uh, I believe that bugging out should be your last option but I also believe that or it's my impression that many preppers underestimate the likelihood for something like this happening. You, you know, um, I believe that if you have lots of resources, let's say you have a homestead, you have a car or two cars, uh, if resources are limited, do not be surprised if the state or the army becomes your enemy. Do not be surprised if they demand that you give them everything you have. I believe that um, it's very naive. And now I'm not speaking to the preppers, but I'm speaking to the people out there who still believe that the army will be there to save them. In a war situation or a uh, crisis like that, the army will not be, their first priority will not be to save you. Uh, it will be to keep the wheels turning uh, to some extent. Uh, it will be to protect the government, uh, certain people there, and it will, 
they will prioritize other things. Now this really shows us how important it is to have the ability to use your feet. I, and I'm serious about this, okay? It shows you how important survival skills really are for anyone and especially if you believe that you know you have a prepper mindset if they take your car if they take your house you basically you you will have two choices you will have to go to whatever accommodation they offer you i would maybe think twice about that or you will have to relocate by foot probably can you hike through an area like this, for instance, for a week, two weeks? Can you do that? Can you carry a backpack, your bug out bag? Is it too heavy, perhaps? Have you gone hiking with your bug out bag? I mean, we, we should all ask ourselves these very important questions. So, if I didn't say so already, bugging out should be your last option. But preppers, I believe, tend to vastly underestimate uh, the likelihood of, uh, of that being necessary. Now, I'm uh, boiling up some chaga tea, actually. I am interested in knowing if you guys can find out if there are similar laws in your country. Now, there are laws that are dormant, as this one used to be until a few days ago. And there are laws that are active. And there are also things that are not really laws, but things that come into play if you have a, a, a what's it called, a, a martial law. So, I think it's at least worth finding out what applies to your country. It's, it's not like it was unimaginable for me that the army would maybe in a crisis like war for instance show up and take everything you have. But I did not know that it was actually in Norwegian law. A new knife, martini boar, because you have a bronze boar head here. <laughs> it's very stylish, very cool. It's probably not the knife I will use the most because you know it's it's so shiny and beautiful, but um, really cool. Another thing is, of course, that this can be used to immobilize certain individuals. Uh, let's say that um, there is social unrest, discontent among the population uh, with the government. Um, taking away the car from certain individuals could be used as, uh, to make life difficult for them. So let this serve as a reminder that the state is not necessarily your friend. Um, and if you ask me, I, I'm not state friendly, if I can put it that way. Um, and that's mainly because it's my impression that the state, not only in Norway, but in most countries, if not all, the state views every citizen and everything that every citizen owns as potentially theirs. And I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that. And yes, I understand this is taking away your car and all that. It's, it's, it only applies in uh, if Norway is at war or whatever. But there is also a, another problem here. Uh, who's to decide when the situation is such that 
they can now take your car. Well, that's the army as well. <laughs> so they themselves will decide when it's time to come and take your car. So, yeah. Chaga <sighs> tea. I must admit, I like chocolate coffee better, but uh, chaga tea is uh, healthier, so uh, yeah. And also I forgot my, my, my coffee back home. Let me know what you think in the comments and take a look at the other video that should appear on the end screen here. And that's all for now. We will talk next time. Okay, bye.